What's up, YouTube? I'm Z, and this channel shows you the world through my lens. <clears throat> Welcome. Um, the death of Slim Shady. This has been on repeat since the day I first listened to it. Um, if you guys haven't seen my reaction, it's because it only lived on YouTube for three hours. And then it got taken down. Uh, it is on Patreon for free. I don't know why I do this when I guess Patreon's to my left. I don't know. Uh, there is a link in the description to my Patreon. Remember, uh, if you haven't heard me say this before, you do not have to do any of the paid tiers. You can join for free. That way you get notifications if I do any other stuff that gets blocked on YouTube. And all of my video content on Patreon is free. You do not have to pay. I repeat, you do not have to pay. Okay. So I've been listening to this on repeat since then. And I love this album. I think there's maybe only two songs that I feel I feel harder to listen to. Uh, but as a whole, as a storytelling progression, as a concept album, I think it's great. And I think the really cool thing, now this is art in general, okay? We could all be looking at the same picture, but all have slightly different interpretations, right? And only the artist will know their true intention. That's how art works, okay? We can make up all sorts of stuff. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people talk about the reverse album theory. Since that's the title of this video, and that's why you guys clicked, I'll talk about that first. I think, I think it's a fairly strong theory, okay? Now I will tell you my first reaction to hearing the the reverse theory I thought was problematic because when I listened to Guilty Conscience the way the two are talking it seemed like a very clear distinction to me who was M and who was Slim. However, when uh, you keep going I believe further up there is a track where the perspective of Slim Shady says to Eminem, how many times have you tried to kill me already? So after I thought, after I kept listening to the album and I, I heard that part again and I was like, oh, this could actually really make the reverse album theory work, right? Let's talk through it. Somebody save me. I mean, reverse, I see this then, okay, this is from the perspective of Eminem feeling like a marshal feeling like he's losing the battle with 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 drugs and substance abuse um and feeling like he's losing so somebody save me makes sense right uh guess who's back we know guess who's back is specifically for slim shady so even though that's a ken kenif uh, skit guess who's back is quintessential slim shady so that makes sense slim shady's back toby if I'm to continue this, I would almost feel like Toby is like this declaration of being the best, like being the GOAT. And if the reverse album theory works, in my opinion, this is kind of like him using all that stuff and using Slim is what took him to the height of his power and the height of his ability. And that's why he has this track where he can talk, you know, talk about like being the GOAT, right? Um, bad one is very interesting. Bad one could be, uh, re referencing Slim Shady. I got a bad one. Uh, I also think there was parts of it where bad one was said in a way that it could reference a woman, right? I got a bad one. Um, I also felt that it was a total all like this total, total all, um, overall analogy for, or metaphor for, um, the music industry right because the interesting thing about that when he's flexing he says i got platinum diamond uh gold one obviously we can take that as plaques so that would be the music industry side um we could take that as like if you're talking about the girl you know I, I can get her platinum i can get her diamond i can get her all these things because i'm successful uh but the and then obviously if it's slim shady then it's like slim shady helped me get Diamond and platinum and all that stuff. Um, but, by the way, I really like that song. Like, I like that song a lot. Um, but I think that uh, 
the coolest way that I heard it was him kind of flexing his success like this, where it says, she said I got a bad one. And in that sense, it made me think like, oh, it's a bad song. And we know how many times has Eminem been criticized for like, oh, this isn't up to par with his older stuff, or oh, Revival sucks, oh, Kamikaze was okay. Like people say all sorts of stuff, right? Encore wasn't that good. Um, there's all this criticism about it. And then he goes, oh, it's a bad song? It just went platinum. And I, some of those bad ones you said might have gone diamond, you know, gold. Like he's like, oh, even the bad ones are, are doing numbers. So, so I thought that was super dope. But yeah, in the reverse theory, I would say the Slim Shady reference as a bad one and him helping him get those accolades definitely makes sense. Um, <clears throat> he also says some stuff in that which could definitely be influenced by by Slim. Uh, temporary. When I listen to Temporary, obviously that's very hard. But to me, that's Marshall realizing that he is going to ultimately die. Uh, that, that Slim is winning. The drugs are winning. All of that stuff is winning. And this is goodbye to his daughter. Very emotional song. And uh, did you guys notice when you're listening to that that M actually does get emotional? I feel like that is the reason why. He even says in one of the lines, this is the hardest song I've ever had to write. Um, this is why I think the format of that track is like much longer choruses and short verses. This is not a typical song structure for M. M is very typical to have short choruses and long verses because he's got a lot to say. But I think because he had such a hard time uh, and Skylar Gray's got such a beautiful voice and, and singing that, that it just needed to be the strong, the song structure that we heard. Um, from there, we go to Head Honcho, okay? Now, some of this, um, first of all, this song is fire. I personally think Easy Mill went crazy. Like, he did such a good job. I'm still talking about his chess scheme. I think it was such a good scheme, like, very well done. Um, but, you know, and this one is interesting because he says, I'm Marshall... Like, I don't know if you could almost take this, if we're continuing to take this as like, this is Marshall's last stand because he dies in Guilty Conscious 2 in the reverse theory. Um, he says, I'm the boss, I'm Marshall. Like, he, that's kind of how he opens coming into the track. You can, I would personally almost take this as his last stand. <clears throat> I know I'm going off script to what other people are saying. But for me personally, I don't want to just copy what other people say. I've listened to it myself, and this is my interpretation, okay? Uh, so to me, Head Honcho is kind of like his last stand, right? Guilty Conscious is the is the climax of their battle, and if we're going to take it that way, Marshall, uh, again, to me, Guilty Conscious can't be taken two ways. When you listen to it, it's very distinct who Marshall is and who Slim Shady is. So when I listen to Guilty Conscious 2, it seems like Slim dies, right? But we go to breaking news and we listen to this skit and it says how Slim is trying to get Eminem canceled. Now we go into Houdini and all of a sudden, because of this reverse theory, Houdini's music video makes a lot more sense, right? Because in Houdini, we're seeing the portal open up. And Slim Shady step through. And if M actually kills Slim Shady and Guilty Conscious 2, and Slim Shady comes through a portal in Houdini, and that's the Slim Shady that takes over, I think that's the strongest version of the reverse album theory, in my opinion. Uh, also, considering what tracks are going to come up, so if we go from 11 down to 1, he gets a lot crazier as he goes. Like in comparison to these tracks up here, let me switch the view for you guys. In comparison to these tracks up here, Houdini is actually super mild. Like Houdini isn't super crazy Slim Shady. Like yes, he's saying controversial stuff, but in comparison to the stuff he's saying in those top tracks, it's mild. So now that's starting to really make sense. 
from here we go into road rage then we go into fuel again crazy like craziness happening now we're going into the intense stuff lucifer right so at this point when we're hearing the skits that are playing out in the background of the songs now i believe that the slim shady that's come back through houdini right is the is uh is the one that has marshall tied up in the basement okay and we're going to continue lucifer we got all you got he's basically from the past saying if he came from 2002 is that right like the height of eminem hysteria he's like i gave you all of that i'm the reason you have all of that and you got rid of me because he's come back and like slim shady's dead he's like you got rid of me and i gave you all of that making a lot of sense making a lot of sense uh evil <laughs> i mean this is a fantastic song i absolutely love evil brand new dance is psycho okay it's crazy and if this is the slim shady that came back from then it would make sense that he would bring an old song we heard m say it later in the album in guilty conscience too where they're arguing he says we uh slim shady says oh we wrote that song in 04 would you leave it off of the album for right uh, it was supposed to be an encore or whatever was it 04? I don't know, whatever. But it was supposed to be an encore. He says, well, Christopher Reeves, Christopher Reeves died. So Slim Shady from back then could have been like, well, we were working on this song about Christopher Reeves. Why didn't you ever put it out? Like, again, kind of starting to make sense. And when I was listening to Brand New Dance, I was like, bro, this song came out of nowhere. Like, why are we digging up the Christopher Reeves beef? Get it? Digging up. Um... But if it's slim from the past, it makes sense. Also, if you guys have, well, go do go watch my reaction, the first thing I say when I hear Brand New Dance is that it sounds like 03, 04 Eminem. Like literally are the first words when I, when I hear Brand New Dance. Uh, from there, we go to Trouble. Um, again, it kind of makes sense that you have a song called Trouble after you literally made fun of a dead paraplegic like beloved actor in the previous track crazy uh habits right he's solidifying that you're you're you can't ever get rid of me like you need me i'm, I'm your prescription man you, you need your prescription that's what's going to get you right and then renaissance right this is really cool because in this reverse album theory renaissance being the last Whoops. Okay. Renaissance being the last track. Now I'm just going to read you guys uh, the definition of Renaissance. Uh, there is a, there are two definitions, obviously. Uh, one is in reference to culture and style of art. Uh, so this is literally talking about the Renaissance era specifically. But the, the word itself as a noun uh, in this context, a revival of or renewed interest in something a revival of or renewed interest of, uh, in something right makes a lot of sense now this is the crazy part to me if that's true if we do do, do go through with this reverse theory i still want to wait and see if either eminem like confirms it himself or we do actually get a side B like some people are predicting and side B confirms it, right? That's kind of like my my thing. I want to I want to get confirmation because yes, a lot of this makes sense and we're connecting dots. But are we the crazy person in the basement with the string on all the pictures? We might be. We might be. Uh, but if that's the case, then Slim is now posing as Marshall because the headstone says Slim Shady. So we want people to believe that Slim Shady is actually dead. But Slim is alive. And he's going to walk out of here like he's Marshall. And he's going to destroy everything. So I think it's a very interesting theory. Um, I think it's very cool. I, I, I would like for it to be real. Because then Eminem is just you know, more of a goat that we already 
knew him to be. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I also do say that some of it is not perfect because some of it really works based on your interpretation of some of these tracks, right? Um, but I really do believe that this section here is the make or break. When we talk about Guilty Conscious 2, Breaking News, Houdini, and the Houdini music video. I think that's the strongest case because, you know, why would that be here in the track list and show him coming through the portal here when all of this has already happened, right? So I think that is actually the strongest case for it potentially working this way. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's what I think about that. Um, you know what? I'll leave it at that. If you guys are interested in hearing my regular album theory, so what, how I interpreted the regular story, uh, I actually really love my interpretation of the regular story. I'm so full of myself. But I just, I'm really like hyped up about how I am perceiving this album because it's making me really love it. So I'd love to share it with you guys, but I don't want to put out something you're not interested in. So comment down below if you want to hear my regular album theory. Uh, it is now f complete in my mind before I had bits and pieces. But as I've listened to this album about six times at this point, I feel pretty confident in, in, in how I'm perceiving this album. So if you guys are still here, I appreciate you spending your time with me. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.